do you mean by saying that a baby loves its mother? What is love? Baby, don't hurt me. Don't hurt me. No more. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to Hop News. On tonight's headlines, Wolf Boy possible sighting. But first, our lead story tonight, what is love? Many people think that they have the answer, but how about a scientific one? Dr. Harlow set to answer this question about half a decade ago. He said in his own words, love is a wondrous state, deep, tender, and rewarding. Because of its intimate and personal nature, it is regarded by some as an improper topic for experimental research. But, whatever our personal feelings may be, our assigned mission as psychologists is to analyze all facets of human and animal behavior into their component variables. Curious as to how Dr. Harlow could possibly study love, he stated that thoughtful men, and probably all women, have speculated on the nature of love. From the developmental point of view, the general plan is quite clear. The initial love responses of the human being are those made by the infant to the mother or some mother surrogate. From this intimate attachment of the child to the mother, multiple learned and generalized affectional responses are formed. Dr. Harlow was an important behaviorist in the 50s who showed us just how important love can really be. He was determined to show the behavioral implications of comfort to mammals. Dr. Harlow was inspired by the research of John Bowlby, who previously posited that intimate physical contact is just as necessary as food and thirst satisfaction. In 1958, Dr. Harlow got to work in his laboratory at the University of Wisconsin with monkeys. Harlow's primates were subjected to a number of experiments. These experiments were conclusively showed that a baby monkey has a preference toward the comfort, even over sustenance. And for the first time in over half a decade, we have an exclusive interview with Dr. Harlow. Our research and development team has created a time machine. Using super advanced technologies, we can now bend the time-space continuum to explore his laboratory, and as it actually was in the 50s. We'll be sending in our very own Pulitzer Prize winning reporter, Graham, to speak with Dr. Harlow. Over to you, Graham. Thanks, Veronica. We're ready here right now to go back in time to the 1958s to visit Dr. Harlow in his lab as it actually was. As you can see, our time machine is ready to go. Our crack team of scientists have done a very good job of putting it together. Uh, I'm really excited to go back and uh, go to the University of Wisconsin as it was over 50 years ago. Well, time to go. Dr. Harlow, it's Graham from it, I mean ABC News. Uh, I was wondering if we could have a few minutes to talk about your research. Dr. Harlow? Certainly. Let me show you a monkey raised on a nursing wire mother. Now here are 106's two mothers. As you can see, it was weaned on a wire mother. Here is baby 106. Watch. He's going to the wire mother. He's got to eat to live. Actually, this baby spends from 17 to 18 hours a day on the cloth mother and less than one hour a day on the wire mother. We had predicted that the variable of contact comfort would be a variable of measurable importance, but we were unprepared to find that it completely overwhelmed and overshadowed all other variables, including those of nursing.
Frankly, doctor, if it comes to a choice between wire and cloth, it's reasonable to expect that any child will go to the cloth. It's a matter of creature comfort, like a baby with its blanket. But is this really love? Well, what do you mean by saying that a baby loves its mother? Certainly one thing we mean is that it gets a great feeling of security in the presence of the mother. Now, Mr. Collingwood, wouldn't you say that if you frightened a baby, that it went running to its mother, was comforted, and then all the fear disappeared and was replaced by a complete sense of security, that that baby loved its mother. Fascinating, Dr. Harlow. That's really amazing what you found. But what about other variables? Does love overcome hunger or thirst? Is there any other, like, tests you've done to show how strong this variable really is? Now, in this experiment, this is the apparatus we use. That looks diabolical. That's just the way the baby monkey feels about it. Flashing eyes, loud sounds, moving mechanical parts, all of these things are designed to frighten a monkey. Now, here we have a peaceful, resting baby monkey. Let's find out what his reactions to his mother are when we frighten him. He's scared, all right, and he does what any child will do in a similar situation. Amazing. That's... Oh no, the timeline's breaking down. I've got to get out of here. What do you mean? Welcome back, Graham. Glad to see you made it back and the future is still safe. Boy, that ro robot was sure scary. I bet it was scary for those monkeys as well. Did you see how the monkeys felt about those experiments? Sure did, Veronica. We had some ethical concerns while we were back there. Some of these babies were separated only hours after birth from their mother. Dr. Harlow even said himself, one function of the real mo mother, human or subhuman, and presumably of a mother surrogate, is to provide a haven of safety for the infant in times of fear and danger. The frightened or ailing child clings to its mother, not its father, and this selective responsiveness in times of distress, disturbance, or danger may be used as a measure of the strength of affectional bonds. We have tested the this kind of differential responsiveness by presenting to the infants in their cages, in the presence of two mothers, various fear-producing stimuli, such as the moving robot. My team also caught all kinds of different footage while Dr. Harlow was out. Now, I'm going to warn uh, viewers right now, they have young monkeys in the room. They should probably have them close their eyes or walk out of the room. Okay, roll it. Dr. Harlow's experiments showed us very useful information which inspired many future psychologists, including Mary Ainsworth, who is famous for her attachment styles theory. However, by today's standards, many might consider his use of animals to be unethical. Monkeys used in the experiment when introduced to other monkeys were reluctant and avoided to other monkeys in the future. Their psyche was permanently altered as a result of how they were treated in their infancy for these experiments. Thanks for that footage, Graham. Wow. Amazing and shocking footage you had there. Now, the next question you must be wondering is, what does all this mean, and how does it apply to me as a human? Well, actually a lot, say psychologists. There are really no differences between the basic responses of human infants and monkeys to affection like nursing, clinging, contact, and visual and auditory exploration between human infants and monkeys. Even the development of perception, fear, frustration, and learning capability are very similar between the two. For both, the first love responses are those made by the baby to its mother figure. And as stated earlier, in this broadcast, the human mother and the monkey mother's roles are to provide a safe haven for the infant. Dr. Harlow showed through this research that the comfort of a mother is more is of more importance than nourishment is. Man cannot live alone on live on milk alone, Mercedes. Right you are, Veronica. Yes, Harlow. This research verified that love begins with the mother and knowing that she is there to provide the child with safety. 
Although there were ethical concerns with it, the past is a past, Mercedes. Indeed, you are right, Veronica. There were plenty of folks questioning Harlow's study, but look at the valuable information that it provided the world. It could be considered an ethically unsound experiment, but it ended up influencing someone that studied human love and attachment themselves. Even the National Science Foundation awarded him the President's National Medal of Science in 1967 for his work. Well, folks, that's all the time we have for this week. Join us next time to learn more on Episode 2, Ainsworth, Patterns of Attachment. Thank you for joining us on this week's edition of Hop News. We hope to see you here again next week, but for now, we would like to wish you a good evening. Thank you for joining us on this week's edition of Hop News. We hope to see you here again next week, but for now, we would like you to wish you a good evening. And Volby, who previously posited, and Volby, who previously posited, marker.